investigation released last week alleges that President Donald Trump took part in several financial crimes in the 1990s, including tax fraud and tax evasion. Our Talking Points analyst Jack Watson is here to break it all down. Jack? Well, that's right, Galat. After an investigation conducted by journalists at the New York Times, President Trump is now under fire for allegedly avoiding taxes in the 1990s. Here's what the investigation accuses the president and his family of doing. The Times is saying that President Trump received more than $400 million adjusted for inflation from his parents, Fred and Mary Trump, without paying taxes on a big part of it. Now, the Trumps allegedly accomplished this by creating a shell corporation called All County Building Supply and Maintenance. Now, this company had no corporate offices, and according to the Times, the the primary purpose of all county was to give Fred Trump's children money in moves concealed as, quote, legitimate business transactions so they could avoid paying a hefty 55% tax. Now, tax experts told the New York Times that what the president did in the 90s was, quote, improper or possibly illegal. However, due to the statute of limitations, getting a criminal prosecution for this most likely won't happen. But that doesn't rule out a civil fine. We'll talk a little about that later. So let's look at the numbers a little bit here. President Trump and his siblings should have received about $550 million uh, on all of Fred Trump's money, uh, it should have been taxed about $550 million on all of Fred Trump's money, uh, but they only paid about $52 million, which is just about a 5% rate compared to 55%, meaning if the allegations are true, he avoided paying the majority of his taxes throughout this scheme. Now, here's what the Trump camp is saying. Now, of course, they're denying the allegations, and Trump lawyer Charles Harder is saying that the allegations are completely false and that the president had little to no involvement in the scheme, if there was any scheme. Now, Harder also says that uh, President Trump kept his distance when it came to doing taxes and let professionals do the job. Now, it's no secret that this story in particular, which was released um, in the middle of last week, was swept under the rug a little bit, guys, by the fact that uh, Brett Kavanaugh was recently confirmed to the Supreme Court, but it's certainly going to be one that we're going to be keeping our eyes on for a very long time. Now, Jack, we've seen, you know, for the past year or so that there are different arguments on what the president can and can't face legal action for while in office. How do you see this one playing out? Well, as I mentioned before, a criminal conviction is out of the question. This happened in the 1990s, allegedly. Uh, if, he, if, if all of it is true, uh, he wouldn't be able to get a criminal prosecution for that. A civil fine, however, according to tax experts, uh, can range anywhere from 15 to 75 per, for 85 percent uh, of what the what was avoided of, of being paid. I mean, there's there's a lot that uh, at risk here for President Trump, theoretically. Now, whether that actually comes to fruition, there's obviously a lot more uh, legal battles that the president is going through right now. Uh, namely Namely the Russia probe, but uh, this is certainly something to keep your eye on if, if, if you're looking for something, something to happen here. So this kind of comes at a time when we're seeing uh, a lot of Republicans get investigated. We recently saw insider trading. We've recently seen allegations of fraud. How is this going to affect Republicans in the midterm now that you have such big accusations being leveled against the head of their party? Elijah, electorally speaking, in the purview right now, in the very front of voters right now is the Kavanaugh confirmation. That's going to be the main... Uh, it, social issue going into the, the midterm elections. This is going to take sort of a bit of a, a side uh, to the Kavanaugh confirmation. And this election, make no mistake, is going to be about social issues. And uh, many political analysts have said, and I agree with them when they say this, that this uh, midterm is a referendum on Trump, not just the Republican Party, but President Trump. Uh, and the fact that these allegations came out against the president uh, and they're being apparently corroborated by these documents, I mean, it, it's a pretty convincing case that the New York Times makes. If, if all of this is true, I think it's, I think it's pretty alarming for, for the Trump base. But again, this isn't really going to change the mind of a whole lot of Trump voters. Now, speaking of that Trump base, though, uh, you know, when he was running for election, you know, something he really ran on was that, you know, he got this $1 million loan from his father. The information in this report is different. I mean, do you think that has any meaning? Well, this essentially confirms that a lot of what the president has said about his wealth accumulation throughout his entire career isn't really completely accurate. He did receive, if this is true, a lot of it from his father. Of course, he turned that money into even more money, but it certainly wasn't a small loan of a million dollars if this is true. Now, the fact that the president has so openly said that and so openly advertised that I think is already advertised, it's already branded into the brains of his supporters. So I don't think that uh, an article like this is really going to sway people away from Donald Trump if all of the other stuff, the Kavanaugh accusations, didn't uh, sway those voters away from Donald Trump. I don't think this will. Jack Watson, thank you. Looking through this story, something that really hasn't been followed. Great reporting. Thank you Definitely. so much. Definitely. Thank you.